I realized after nearly a year and a half of starting this YouTube thing, I don't think I've ever made a beginner's guide to mechanical keyboards in any way. Huh. A lot of people have actually told me that they got into this hobby through my videos and I would sincerely like to apologize to you and your wallet. I am very sorry. Honestly, I don't do a very good job in making a lot of my content easily digestible to newcomers. Besides, you know, my cursed keyboard builds or something like those because make keyboard bad or make bad keyboard good equals funny. Haha, <laughs> am I right? <laughs> but I guess since this hobby is constantly growing, I thought I should make my very own beginner's guide to mechanical keyboards, even though those videos already exist and illustrate the hobby in much more detail than I ever could due to my IQ deficiency. But nevertheless, I'll try to give all of you fresh noobs of the hobby a quick rundown in a way that IQ deficient individuals like myself can understand. Welcome to the scuffed guide to the keyboard hobby. I'll go through this video from the perspective of what most people that get into the hobby would have. You're probably a nerd, maybe you own a few anime figures, I don't judge, have a PC and of course own a mechanical keyboard from maybe Razer or Corsair or whatever the hell r slash build a PC was recommending at the time. Or you play Osu. Well, let's start off with the very first question we all have when getting into this hobby. What the hell are custom mechanical keyboards? It's pretty self-explanatory, it's a mechanical keyboard that you build yourself. Okay, video is done, thanks for watching, be sure to like and subscribe and hit that notification. Okay, I'm just kidding, like and subscribe though. However, much like other simple tasks on paper, once you start thinking about all the parts necessary to complete this said task, it can get a little bit confusing. So let's break up the things needed in an easy way for us mouth breathers to grasp and start your journey towards a custom keyboard. So in order to build a custom keyboard, you need six essential parts. One, the keyboard case, two, PCB, three, switch plate, four, stabilizers, five, switches, and six, keycaps. Now, when you stumble upon a custom keyboard review, which you guys probably have, maybe you watched a video on the KBD67 Lite or something, in most cases, the review will be on the case specifically. <laughs> Get it? In most cases? Okay, I'll, I'll stop, I'll stop. The case is arguably the most important part of the keyboard because, well, it's the keyboard itself. It can come in many different form factors, but the most common are TKL, which stands for 10 keyless, 75%, 65%, 60%, and that's it. We don't talk about 40s or ortholinears, those are cursed lands, you must never go there. Now there are other wacky options as well, but let's not get too ahead of ourselves. Most of you guys are probably angrily typing right now, where's the numpad? And I'll be frank, although full size customs do exist, they're not that common or popular. So you will either need to get a separate numpad, there are customs of that by the way, or just suck it up and realize, hey, I don't really need this thing because I can tell you right now, most people don't really need a numpad. Now, in a custom keyboard case, there are various ways the plate or PCB that holds the switches can be mounted. This can greatly affect how the keyboard feels when you type and sounds as well. The materials that are part of the case can also affect the overall sound, but we won't get too into that in this video. I won't get too in depth while explaining the different types of design choices of the case and how that affects the acoustics and typing feel of the board, but I'll let you know a few of the most common mounting methods so you can understand reviews when you're watching a little bit better. I would say that the most common mounting methods in the current keyboard meta in 2022 are isolation gasket mount, top mount, gummy o-ring, and tray mount. A very fast summary of these mounts, this is an extremely condensed summary to give a general idea. There are more intricacies to each mounting style, but I want to keep it short. Isolation gasket is when gaskets are installed at the case or plate on the top and bottom of the mounting points and is sandwiched by the top and bottom of the case. My opinion, typically this type of mounting tends to mute the sound a bit. It's a softish typing feel depending on the implementation. Top mount is when there's mounting points on the plate that screws into the top of the case. 
my opinion, typically louder and more resonant, harsher typing feel. It's a pretty old, tried and true classic. It's pretty hard to mess up. Gummy O-ring, type of gasket mount where a O-ring goes around the plate and the PCB, and it usually sits on top of the mounting points on the bottom of the case. My opinion, tends to be higher pitch, nice and soft typing feel. Tray mount, the plate slash PCB is mounted onto posts on the bottom of the case. And my opinion, it's not that good, pretty outdated. Okay, I'm sorry, let's take a breather, crack open a monster, or brew some artisanal coffee because, I don't know, all these keyboard copyists are into coffee for some reason, but yeah, that should give you the general gist of the popular mounting styles of a custom keyboard case. So now, let's give a brief rundown. You know the layouts and chose the one you liked, and have painstakingly decided on the type of mounting method you want to try. We can finally move on to the next essential part, which would be the PCB and the switch plate. Congrats, you already have those things, because most custom keyboards nowadays will include a compatible PCB and plate with the case itself. Wow. Now comes the decision, in some cases, to choose a type of PCB and material for the switch plate. For the PCB, the two options are hot swap or soldered. Hot swap means it's plug and play, just pop in your switches and hey, it works. You can also take out switches and change them whenever you feel like. Soldering is the process of actually soldering the switches on the PCB itself. Now you might be asking, why would anyone choose the soldered option when hot swap is offered? And the answer is that the solder fumes gives off a buff on how good your switches will sound. <laughs> I'm just kidding. The real answer is that solder, more often than not, gives more options for layout choices compared to hot swap, and also because it's fun. Soldering a keyboard sort of makes it feel more engaging. Honestly, that's probably the biggest factor in why people choose solder nowadays. Also, those sweet, sweet solder fumes. Maybe this is why I have an IQ deficiency, huh? But yeah, I would recommend hot swap for a beginner like you in most cases, and once you're ready, maybe pick up a soldering kit and stuff if you really want. Now that we know what PCB, let's choose the plate. The plate itself has a pretty big effect on the feel and sound actually, so this choice is actually sort of important, but we don't got the time to go in depth right now, so I guess it's time for another quick summary in my opinion of course. The most popular plate materials in the current keyboard meta in 2022 are brass, aluminum, FR4, and polycarbonate slash other plastic plates. So brass is pretty stiff, higher pitched, aluminum is nice middle ground, FR4 is softer than alu, harder than PC slash plastic, it's a nice middle ground again, but slightly lower pitched than aluminum, and polycarbonate slash other plastic plates is the softest and the most lower pitched. I personally like a aluminum or plastic plate such as PC, but yeah, I know what all of you are thinking, you want that low pitched dock. Okay, I get it, just go for the PC plate. Oof, and we are done with picking out our keyboard. So at this point, you should have made some choices, and to give an example of a first build, let's say you chose a QK65 with a hot swap PCB and a PC plate. Nice. Now what? Huh. You thought you were done? <laughs> no. Remember the list I showed you of the essential parts? Yeah, we're only at number 4 now. Goddamn. But luckily, we are almost there. So, let's get to number 4, the stabilizers. The stabilizers, or stabs for short, are the things that help bring up the big keys on your keyboard. Sometimes the case you bought will come with stabs, but I recommend getting some better stabs most of the time. Just be sure to modify and tune them, because Radley stabs will make the whole build you worked so hard on feel like doo-doo. Alex and Mr. Teehee Types have some good videos on modding stabs, so go check them out. Personally, I would recommend to beginners some Durox because you can just order them on Amazon and they're pretty good. But there are a lot of different options out there with some different lubing techniques I would recommend for different stabs. But that is a video on its own. Now on to number 5 of the essentials part list and that is the switches. Ah yes, the switches, the heart and soul of the keyboard. This is the stuff you will actually be typing on and honestly is a rabbit hole by itself. 
the intricacy of a switch is a enigma and also filled with more nerds than keyboards. So to keep it short, there are three main types of switches. We got linears, tactiles, and clickies. I'm not going to go into full detail, but linears have a smooth key press, tactiles have a feedback, and clickies click. Do your research and choose one that interests you, but I review a lot of switches and I know that many of you don't really want to think for yourselves. So I listed some beginner recommendations under my own personal tastes right here, so go crazy. Okay, this is important. Listen up. No matter what switch you choose, besides clickies, don't choose clickies though, be sure to lube your switches. How are you gonna get waifus with that fancy keyboard of yours if it's going to end up sounding like a pre-built? Lubing your switches is essential in making it feel nice and sound nice. It is the very backbone of a custom keyboard, so yeah. When you pick up switches, depending on your switch type, pick up some Crytox 205 Grade Zero or Tribosis 3203 to lube your switches with. Also, a switch opener will help a lot as well. Trust me. I have a video on how I personally lube my switches and my recommendations, but there's also some that are made much better than mine, so go watch those as well. But again, lube your damn switches, or I'm gonna come find you. We are at the home stretch now. Let's recap once more. We got the case, the PCB, the switch plate, the stabs, and the switches with lube, of course. Now for the most important part of your build, the aesthetics or better known as the keycaps. The keycaps, okay, I'm not going to explain it. You should all know what they are, but let me tell you about some options. We got ABS or PBT keycaps with a lot of different options for the keycap profile, which is the shape of your keycaps. Now the material and profile will affect the sound and of course the feel of your board. There are a lot of profiles to go through and I'm not going to go through them since most of the time I prefer to use the tried and true and probably most readily available profile which is the cherry profile. You can go ahead and experiment but for those starting out, I personally always recommend cherry. Okay, now that we have the profile, do I get ABS or PBT and what brand of keycaps do I get? In my opinion, I feel like ABS sounds crisper and feels smoother. PBT is a bit rougher and lower pitched, but it is preference as there are pros and cons to each material. And TLDR, both materials are perfectly fine. Now for the brand of keycaps, it really depends on what your budget is and what type of aesthetics you're looking for. Uh, I personally like using GMK, which is a premium line of ABS keycaps, but for your very first board, go for whatever speaks to you. Uh, you can always easily change it out later for a better option. A good in-stock option could be an affordable PBT set from Taobao, AliExpress, Kinetic Labs, or Canon Keys. And yes sir, we are done. <sighs> Oh god, why is this hobby so damn confusing? God damn. But anyways, you should now have all the parts you need to build your very first custom mechanical keyboard. And all it took was... Oh. Oh god. Yeah, I probably should have told you how expensive this hobby could get. <laughs> well, welcome to the rabbit hole, bitch. There is no leaving now. You're stuck in here forever. You're welcome.